Good morning, guys. I'm glad you're all here. Thank you very much for joining me. Yeah, here in South Dakota, we got a winter weather event going on. High winds and oh, rain mixed with snow. It's currently 34 degrees where I'm at with winds at about 31 miles an hour. Um, gusts are much stronger. I bet you you're glad you're not in this stuff. But early this morning at 546 a.m. local time, Pacific Standard Time, there was a 2.9 earthquake there in the state of Washington along what is called the Darrington Devil's Mountain Fault Zone. This area is capable of having a magnitude 7 or greater earthquake. The reason being the fault is about 31 miles long. USGS gave it an intensity level of 4, which means it was felt indoors by many, outdoors by a few. At night, some people would have been woken up. Well, I'm sure they were because at 5.46 a.m., many people probably were still sleeping or maybe just getting up. Dishes, windows, doors would have been rattling and parked automobiles would have been rocking noticeably. USGS does not have a moment tensor ball, so we can't tell which direction the fault moved. But you can see it was more likely along the fault by the felt reports. Up over here we have Oak Harbor. Uh, down here, uh, Marysville. I can't quite make that out what that says. Intensity level of 4 right there. Intensity level 3. Going a little bit more west, that was nine responses. And then three responses close to where the earthquake occurred, intensity level four. So here's the earthquake. You can see the river. Um, here it says tribal joint. I don't know what that is. Oh, <laughs> they, yeah. Can you see that? Uh, so they must be getting into other types of enterprises besides casinos. So this would be the Sauk River. And let's bring it out. I tried to draw out the fault zone as best as I could. I found another document that actually says it goes not so much along here, but um, down to where it's labeled SWJF, which is the Southern Woodby Island Fault. Um, but I had originally found a document that shows it goes all the way up here by Lopez Island. Now, in another report that I talked about the earthquakes um, down there by Los Angeles, how they could have a sudden uplift of the fault system. It would be like uh, an arrow being suddenly shot up into the sky or on a seesaw. Yeah, suddenly shot up. And I found this interesting here where there was different areas. They call them scarps where the fault suddenly jumps up. And let me highlight this for you. Anywhere between 3 and 15 feet. It's like wham. It jumps up. Can you imagine 15 feet of uplift? Now that was a vertical uplift. And then they had lateral movement of six and a half feet and i've talked about earthquakes the longer the earthquake the more you're shaking back and forth and that would be every second every second being jerked back and forth six and a half feet can you imagine that the larger the earthquake the longer the shaking back and forth co continues so the most recent earthquake was between 1,000 and 2,200 years ago. And then there was another one, a second one, um, between 100 to 500 years ago. That's a big gap. There was another scarp and uplift there east of Mount Vernon of three feet. So going to Google Earth, let's see if I can find the location of Mount Vernon. Oh, right there. Okay, and I happen to have a GPS station in that location, too. This is the one that's drawn out in yellow. So the uplift has been neither going up or dropping down. That's how I drew it out. Let's see if there's been any new changes 
since I, I posted this. All right, it's S-E-D-R and 1.08, I believe this is measured in millimeters. So it was rising up. Let's see, what's the date on this? This is the third. This page has not been updated. And then you can see here where it was deflating and deflating and rising up. 1.08. Let's get 1.08 there also. Going through this, it goes it goes all the way back to December. Oh, what date? First of last year. Let me pull it back over. Okay. Uh, which had uplift of 1.58 millimeters. Oh, there's 2.38 millimeters. And then it went up and it went down. It's it's constantly breathing. Here we've got 3.18 millimeters, which really isn't a lot when you're measuring in millimeters. See, it went up 3.18, but then over here we got it went down 2.12. Went up. Looks like it's slowly rising more than what is deflating. And then going back down to what it's Oops, there we go, what it's currently showing. So anyways, there's Mount Vernon. This paper here was a scenario if there was a 7.1 earthquake in that location. They figured there would be liquid faction going on, uh, similar to what happened in Loma Prieta earthquake in 1989. There could be a tsunami if the fault ruptured there in the Pugent Sound. And we'll come out to where the fault goes, yeah, all the way out here. Yeah, depending on if it ruptured there or down here. Could also be delta failures and landslides caused by the shaking. If it was a 7.1, 15 counties would be affected. Uh, total injuries, uh, 652. Total numbers of buildings extensively damaged, 4,864. People losing their homes and would require sheltering, uh, 1,448. People without power for one day would be 10,176. And people who would need water because of the loss and broken water lines, 29,697. Now this scenario is from 2009, so I'm sure there's a lot more people and a lot more buildings. So this scenario was developed probably about 13 years ago. Skagit County is expected to suffer the highest numbers of casualties. Many of the injuries will be serious enough to require hospitalization. Numerous numbers of fatalities are likely even if the event occurs during the afternoon or early evening. Nearly half of Skagit's buildings stock may be damaged. Of these buildings, it is anticipated that more than 2,300 will be extensively damaged and approximately 750 completely damaged. After Skagit, the damage is greatest in Sonomish, Whatcom, and Island counties. Most of the damaged buildings will be residential but commercial and industrial structures also account for the large portion of the total in this scenario. So down here, the scenario and the number of injuries and death and damage was from 2012-2013. So they know it's just a matter of time before something like that happens. Um, they've already had two events in the past. Did you feel this earthquake this morning? Like I said, it was just before uh, 6 o'clock this morning, 5.46 a.m. It was shallow, uh, minus 0 0.1 kilometers in depth. So this earthquake occurred above sea level. All earthquakes are measured from sea level. A lot of people don't realize that. So it was above sea level, and that's why it's got the negative. Let me make that bigger. Nine, uh, minus for the depth of this earthquake. 
don't forget to subscribe and check to see if you're still subscribed for those of you that are not getting notifications when I put out a video try unsubscribing then resubscribing and then hit the bell so what are your thoughts please put those comments down below uh, did you notice it and what did your pets do how did they react before and after any earthquake has the uh, potential of being a foreshock for something much larger see up over here in 1874 there was a magnitude 7.4 please stay safe and i'll talk to you later god bless you bye